welcome to the Meadowlands Arena here in East Rutherford, New Jersey for the East Regional Semifinals. Game one on tap for the evening, the top seed in the East Region, the Tar Heels of North Carolina, taking on the lowest remaining seed in the tournament, the Hurons of Eastern Michigan. Now that'll be game one, as mentioned, game two tonight here from the Meadowlands Arena will feature Oklahoma State and Temple. And good evening, everyone. I'm James Brown, along with the coach, Bill Raftery. And, Bill, if we were to listen to the experts, they expect North Carolina to have a cakewalk to the Final Four. It won't be that easy, but they do have almost everything. They're deep, they're talented, solid senior leadership led by Rick Fox. Steve Smith has you brainwashed as well. <laughs> Rick Fox, the guy they go to, he does all the little things. He embodies the spirit of the Tar Heels. He'll pick, he'll screen, he'll cut, he'll take the three, make the big play for Dean Smith. Eastern Michigan is not overwhelmed. As a matter of fact, the players say we're not in awe, especially their center, Marcus Kennedy. Well, if I were built like him, I wouldn't be in awe either. Big, strong guy down on the box. They'll go to him. They'll clear out the backside. He has to do a lot of damage if this club's going to be a factor tonight. All right, and a starting lineup for both squads tonight. The matchup to keep an eye on Marcus Kennedy for Eastern Michigan, defended by Pete Chilcutt for North Carolina. contest. Bobby Dibler is the referee, David Bear, and Harold Allen. We take a look at Dean Smith in his 30th season as the head coach at North Carolina. And Ben Braun in his sixth year at Eastern Michigan, 12 years as a head coach in the collegiate coaching ranks. The third member of our announced crew tonight will be joined by sideline reporter Curry Kirkpatrick. Joe Cut and Kennedy jumping center and is controlled by Eastern Michigan. Charles Thomas. A pair of brothers on the team, identical ten, swing that is Charles Thomas and Charles Thomas. This is Lorenzo Neely at the point. Good defensive work by King Rice. And not bad by James Brown with the hand slapping it back in play. Carolina starting man-to-man. -man. And Neely with the wow. Skip pass. Save. You just can't prepare for Carolina. They'll trap. They'll double up off the screens whenever they can. They'll force the longest pass possible. You must come to the ball. Nine seconds on the shot clock. Air ball rebounded by Hallis, and Hallis scores. Corey Hallis, team's third leading scorer and an effective post player. I, it gets good weak side positions. Something that Ben Braun stresses for his point. Davis' pass not controlled by Fox. And Hallis has it stolen. Knocked away by Lynch. This is King Rice. And Rice scores and has a chance for a three-point play. Adin Smith, over the years, gets it all out of the defense. A multiple look, very aggressive in nature, complements the fast pace going the other way. So much Billy was expected of this young man, King Rice, at the free throw line. He's one of only three seniors on Carolina squad, but he really has weathered the storm nicely. He has quite the critic. Early in the year, they booed him. He's been their leader. And emotionally, in watching him at practice, they respond to him. Lorenzo Neely, considered the best all-around guard in the MAC Conference, Mid-American Conference. Neely's going to have to penetrate and then dish for the threes. That's a big part of Eastern Michigan's offense. Yeah, they'll switch the exchanges. Makes it very tough. Nice steal by Rick Fox. And Fox with the score, the leading score for the Tar Heels at 17 a game. Got to snap the ball, JB. Early 5-2 lead by the Tar Heels. Thomas, Carl Thomas. And he can hit the three at, for the most part of the season, averaging 50% from three-point range. A good three there. A lot of back screens on offense. Eastern Michigan, straight up man-to-man. -man. Lynch 
which is passed, knocked out of bounds. We mentioned the passing lanes. They've exchanged, they've switched, and right here, the step up, you must show the ball, or Rick Fox and company will finish strong. Fox has really developed into an outstanding player this season. They'll be the up and down, a lot of back swings. They get back going. Chilcutt with the rebound for Carolina. And gets the drop. Pete Chilcutt. Have to get Kennedy into the flow somehow. Billy, I was about to mention Kennedy, an undersized center, having difficulty against the taller Carolina squad. Fox with the loose ball. Running beautifully, James. Mm -hmm. Look at the ball movement. Lynch. Short. Halleck with the rebound. Up to Neely. And Neely can't get the drop. One at the foul. It stays Eastern Michigan basketball. Nothing easy, but that's an opportunity break. They'll push the ball up Eastern Michigan. Neely. And, and the big thing, I think, in this ballgame is to remember, a lot of these kids are from Detroit. They're very competitive. It's not like they haven't been tested. They played some good kids in the playground. One of them, Derek Coleman. And Carl Thomas with his second three-pointer. And Eastern Michigan out in front by one, 8-7. Rice answers right back. Carolina back up by one. And that fist by King Rice, that's the sign to come out. I don't think you ever gave the fist of your life to come out of a game. <laughs> a little nickel dimer by Rick Fox, way outside. We have one thing in common. Dean Smith recruited both of us. Boy, I think you've were, been there a long time then, huh? Well, I think a year, you were a year after me. <laughs> <laughs> Only one year, huh? <laughs> King Rice takes a seat on the bench, and Derek Phelps, well, the freshman King from Christ the King High School in Middle Village, New York, into the lineup for the Carolina Tar Heels. They have a five-second call. They are not getting free for Neely. Good use of the floor. Thomas. And Thomas is warm, to say the least. And the one way of diffusing all the pressure, they leave the longest pass open. You can either screen in on that side or just throw it across. Good matchup right there, Fox and Carl Thomas. And Charles Thomas slaps the ball out of Lynch's hand. Carolina ball. 16-02 remaining in the first half. North Carolina trailing by one to the number 12 seeded Hurons of Eastern Michigan. Hubert Davis, good outside shooter. In and out. Uh, still got <laughs> disrupted the play. And we've got a TV timeout. Carolina trailing by one. A tradition unlike any other. The Masters on CBS. Did you know the cost of two 12-page fax transmissions from these Minneapolis newspapers to Chicago may surprise you? I got an exclusive interview. With AT&T Pro Watts, your business can't get a more accurate way to send a fax. He talks a lot. And our prices are extremely competitive. Even though the other company would like you to believe, they always save you lots of money. Wait a minute. That's news to me. Can I quote you on that? AT&T Pro Watts, another AT&T advantage. Every business morning. The word cakewalk at the top, and they won their first two games by a total combined 50 points over Northeastern and Villanova. Eastern Michigan with an upset of Mississippi State and an overtime victory over Penn State. Carolina that time with a little full court pressure. A lot of looks. Here's a double up. And you see 14 Phelps out. That's the pass. Diagonal cross court. Good job. And Carl Thomas, who's three for three, had a shot blocked that time by Rick Fox. Lynch. Tough. Strong inside. He is. He's going to be a great, great player. A lot of answers for Carolina. They put a lot of people on the floor. Montrose inside. Big, strong, not as quick as Chilcutt. And a jump ball as Neely tried to operate in heavy traffic. Rick Fox tied him up. Possession arrow favor Carolina. 
And Dean Smith, Not boy, talking about that's... impressive in the ranks of well, the collegiate ranks, huh? Uh, everybody impressed with the job, clean, healthy program. Everything you'd want for your kid to attend, I would think, huh? Mm -hmm. Such a good example, without a doubt. Henrik Rodel in for Carolina. Fox with the outside shot, rebounded by Neely. Head up really sound. I like to see him use the dribble a little bit. It can diffuse the doubling up. Charles Thomas can't find the range. Rebounded by Fox. And Rodel, nice spin move. Can't get the ball. Fox slapped out of his hands. And it'll stay in North Carolina. You know, we were talking about Dean Smith and the kind of record that he's established in the collegiate ranks. What about you at Seton oh, Hall? I mean, I know you know him quite well. What was your record <laughs> I like? gave him one win during my career. Of course, my record, uh, some of the kids accuse me of assault and battery. <laughs> <laughs> and breaking and entering a few huddles. Other than that, there's no comparison. Nice screen here. Montrose blocked from behind, but he gets his own rebound. And a seven-foot freshman out of Indianapolis with the score. And his 13-10 Tar Heels. I think Eastern Michigan has done a nice job with ball movement and complementing that with the bodies. Other than Kennedy, they have not been able to get him in the flow. And Kennedy steps out of bounds. Kennedy having some difficulty operating with a big front line defensively. Well, you can see the game plan. Step in front, Montrose, take away, make them loop the basketball because what Caroline does so beautifully is help from the backside. And Kennedy yet to score, the team's leading score. Stepping out of bounds down this end, Henrik Rodel. It'll be Eastern Michigan basketball. And that's not a mistake that he normally would make. A very knowledgeable player. You have to know where you are on the floor. Early turnover picture. Huron's turning it over, 4-2. They beat a high pick and roll, and they end up looking for a three out of this on occasion. Oof. And off the leg of Marcus Kennedy. And Kennedy really trying his best to get into the offensive flow has not found the groove yet. Well, flow's the word. You have to play within yourself. It's a big game. They need a key performance out of him. Averaging just shy of 20 points a game. Montross, nice strong move over the 6-7 Kennedy. And Ben Barnes Ball Club is going to have some difficulty with the height of Carolina. They are, and they're using the big bodies. But Kennedy has to cut to the ball, keep Montross active on this defensive end. Charles Thomas for three. Hmm. Well, he's got the bad thumb, said he heard it Monday, but uh, no problem shooting the threes, he said earlier. From the same side of the floor as his twin brother, Carl. Hard pass, recovered by Fox. Under 13 to play in the first half. Carolina on top by two. Henrik Rodel double pumping and gets the fall. Henrik Rodel, a sophomore, hometown, Boisenstein, Germany, played ball at Chapel Hill. This is Kennedy. James, if you can force Carolina to beat you with the bounce, you're playing pretty good defense. He may have touched the floor with the toenails before the release, but that was a pretty good defensive set by Eastern Michigan. Not a lot of hang time on that No, one. no. Didn't get up too high. Saw a glimpse of Rich Fox on the bench. It's King Rice, Hubert Davis, Clifford Rozier, Eric Montross, and Brian Reese, the five on the floor defensively for Carolina in white. Mike Boykin, number 41, in for Eastern Michigan. Great look. Rice with the loose ball. You can't get over that helping defense. You don't get anything easy against Carolina. And Reese has it blocked by Carl Thomas. Huron's ball. Carl Thomas. <laughs> From three-point land, Carl Thomas is four for four. And Dean Smith has a play where they dribble hard to the corner and kick it back out for the three. Nice job by Eastern Michigan. And check that three for three for Thomas from three-point land. And King Rice. Answers back. 19-16. Foul by Carolina. Lorenzo Neely trying to penetrate. Grabbed by Clifford Rozier. Rozier, very talented youngster. Good inside moves. One bad habit. Puts it on the floor on occasion. 
For 50 years, One Life Insurance Company has ranked first in dividend performance more times than any other. Not everyone has heard of us. Some people have. Northwestern Mutual Life. This is how easy it is to collate a mailing on an IBM laser printer. And how easy is it to collate with our major competitor? Probably now isn't the best time to ask. IBM laser printers. Suddenly, nothing else measures up. The thoroughly modern design was a surprisingly courageous decision, one that we applaud for its solid step into the future. What knocked us out was the incredible control and maneuverability Caprice Classic LTZ brings to the part. And for that, we gave it this party favor. Chevrolet Caprice Classic LTZ is Motor Trend Car of the Year. It's destined to be an important car on the American scene. And now it's easy to win with a heartbeat. How husbands are using a legal loophole to cheat their wives out of alimony payments. The story Monday on the CBS Evening News with Dan Rather. I mentioned that there's a third member of the announced team, and it's our sideline reporter, Curry Kirkpatrick. James, James, you got to love these teams for the Mid-American Conference. Last year at this point in this tournament, uh, Ball State held the uh, UNLV to a six-point victory. It's the toughest game UNLV's had in this tournament in two years. The other day, Carl Thomas came in here and said, scared of Carolina, they put their tank tops on just like we do. Of course, uh, Lorenzo Neely has uh, played on the playgrounds against Derek Coleman and Steve Smith, and uh, they're ready. They know where they are. Back to you guys. All right, Curry, and they've also had some experience. Billy playing with one Magic Johnson with the Los Angeles Lakers. Uh, not a bad play. They love the threes. Of course, this team has nothing to lose when you think of it, but their nickname. They're going to take it away at the end of the year. So they got to be loose. Davis, Hubert Davis, three-point specialist for Carolina. Shooting 47% from three-point land, his first basket of the evening. And Carolina out to its biggest lead, 22-16. Eastern Michigan playing physical right now. Two big low post guys. They should screen away, get them both involved a little bit. Neely. Rice with the loose ball. Three on two. Rozier out to Hubert Davis for three. Mm. Second three-pointer from Hubert Davis. Well, the phases of the game, you've got to get back, balance the floor. Then you've got to go match up. And you can't leave Hubert alone. He drills those open jumpers. I think his uncle, Walter <laughs> Davis, would be mighty pleased. He sure should. A tradition at Carolina. Pretty good offensive player. Roger Lewis. Loose ball. And Davis diving for the loose ball. They're going to catch Davis with the personal foul. Seldom gets too upset on that sideline, does he? Because if you won at the pace he's won, you'd be pretty relaxed as well. But Eastern Michigan now trying to find some bodies, rotating people to get some rest. And I'm, I'm curious to see how the physical play, Boykin and Kennedy, works now, or if they go to it. The coach knows what he wants. Let's see if the players do. Will Felder in a guard for Eastern Michigan, along with Carl Thomas, who replaces his brother, Charles Thomas. And Charles Thomas back in. Inside to Kennedy. And Kennedy finally breaks the drought with his first basket of the evening, coming at the 9.51 mark. Chill cut with his own rebound. Shouldn't have put it on the floor. Kennedy not playing himself right now of course gets in at this end he didn't match up on Chilcutt and then he let him go by for the rebound strong rebound by Rozier Davis and Davis with his third three-pointer and a chance for four and what's happening now to Ben Braun's club 
They're responding defensively, but once you get back with Carolina, the force of their dribble will open up the perimeter shooters, in this case, Davis. Substitutions by North Carolina, the five on the floor now. Derek Phelps, Hubert Davis, Pete Chilcutt, Rick Fox, and George Lynch, the five for Carolina and White as Hubert Davis steps to the free throw line for a four-point play attempt. And he converts. A 29-18 North Carolina lead, 9-23 remaining in half number one. Uh, he'll felder nice penetration. He's in there to run the show, get some rest for Lorenzo Neely. Good read. I'm sure Marcus Kennedy is pleased to see Felder in there, his second basket of the evening. Rick Fox being defended by Carl Thomas, a nice matchup there. Bad pass by Davis, stolen by Eastern Michigan. And a good play by Charles Thomas, who throws it off the jersey of George Lynch. And maybe Marcus Kennedy has arrived. Great defensive help on the far end. That may ignite him and his club. And McRodel back in to replace Hubert Davis. The five for Eastern Michigan. Charles and Carl Thomas. Corey Hallis. To Hill Felder. And Marcus Kennedy. Hallis, nice move in traffic. He can play. Good field, finds holes, good jump shooter within that 15 to 18 foot range. Four points for Hallis. Lynch, strong territory for him, but he throws it up too strong. And Lynch, over aggressive foul after he misses. He knows his way around the low post area, and Dean Smith really upset with Lynch. Normally able to convert that particular play, but Hallis, kind of a kid that could get them going because he'll pop to the high post and he'll dump down. Kennedy has to come on with a little bit of a rush. Get Carolina in some foul problems. Mm -hmm. First personal on Lynch, fourth team foul against Carolina. This is Kennedy. And Kennedy, not a textbook looking shot, but he'll take it. Well, they don't have a subway out here in Jersey. <laughs> but that was a questionable non-call. Good hustle by Rodel, and a jump ball call, possession arrow favoring Eastern Michigan. But we've got a break in the action as the Hurons have cut it back to five. There's a thread that runs through our lives. A thread that binds us together. Friendship, family, pride. These are the values that endure. The best things have always been those that last. Loaded with pepperoni, mushrooms, Italian sausage, and green peppers. Get one for $7.99 and a second for just $4 more. Dollar to deliver, gonna change. North Carolina has capitalized on Eastern Michigan turnover, scoring points. Tar Heels using their height advantage to good use. And Eastern Michigan trying to stay within striking distance because of their ability from three-point range. It all translates to a five-point North Carolina lead. And Marcus Kennedy, who had been shut out, has led a six-zip Eastern Michigan run. All six points scored by Marcus Kennedy. Mm. Take a look at St. John's. Eight. <laughs> 
Not Amazing, surprised. aren't they? Not surprised. Well, the style of play, they'll keep it down. I called them a, a Princeton team with talent. Now you're thinking of Malik Sealy when you're saying talent. Mm -hmm. The pressure now. But Eastern Michigan, I think they have their legs. They've found the comfort zone now. Carolina keeps making you think. A little change, fronting the inbounds receiver. Charles Thomas with the inbounds pass. They've done a nice job cross-courting the basketball, reversing it. Hallis. Kennedy with the follow. They design an offense to get weak side rebound. You notice when a shot goes up, there's always somebody on the long side to position themselves. Little breakdown on the defensive rotation that time by Carolina. Mm -hmm. Not blocking out. Lorenzo Neely has been on the bench for a while, Billy. Sure has. Well, Felder handled that pressure pretty well. And he's staying with him. Good double up here. Pressure causing Lynch a bit of a problem. Skip pass over to Rodel. Very active on offense. <laughs> Phelps, nice move by Derek Phelps, the freshman from Pleasantville, New York. His first basket. And what a job by Lynch warding off. A nice screen. Inside. They got to go inside a little bit. Make the big guys. North Carolina getting the job from its backcourt. This is a front court player, Rick Fox. Rick Fox. Rick not into it. Not finishing strong. I was expecting a little bit of a jam. That kind of a game so far. Kind of a pro mentality. Yeah. Facing himself. Yeah, saving it. <laughs> you don't save at the NCAA, though. He's done a nice job on Felt in the last trip. Look at this. Good movement. And Hallis, I like the attitude going up for the slam. Oh. But foul. I believe by Rick Fox. And uh, JB, the deployment, are they ready? <laughs> Putting their people in the right spot? And uh, Corey Hallis, they are known, at least from the tapes that I've seen, for their ability to pass and find one another. Hallis, a great cutter. One of those guys that finds the hole. You know, an interesting little story, and I spoke to him today again about it. His parents are in India on a mission non-denominational mission. They don't even know he's playing in the NCAA. Mm -hmm. He didn't have a chance to write them, although he writes them frequently. And he said, he'll just have to wait. He's hoping it lasts a long time before he writes the letter. I think he'll have to answer for that when they do get back. That's a pretty big note, though. <laughs> and you, you said, uh, which denomination? And I, I thought maybe you wanted to make a donation. <laughs> and he said, I'll take your jewelry, but right for your bracelet. He said, they're born again Christians, and over there serving the mission, stolen by Eastern Michigan. Charles Thomas. A four-point Carolina lead. Movement. The press work one second time ineffective. Under six to play in the first half, and the big fella Eric Montrose with six points. Oh, he's got Charles Thomas over to Kennedy, and Kennedy foul. Nice ball movement, and if that is Rick Fox, that's personal foul number three. The help out brought him down. But you see how they pull that string, the pop to the foul line? They've gone cross court, they've gone to the box, and now they fill the foul line, get the heads turned. Montrose a step slow in the giveaway by Rick Fox. You think they're concerned or in awe of the Tar Heels? At all, not at all. As you take a look at Rick Fox, and perhaps that lack of emotion on that layup that you were talking about may be hurting them. And if you're, your head isn't in it, you really don't go after it. Thirty-five, thirty-one, North Carolina. Five, thirty-six remaining in the first half. It's King Rice, Eric Montrose, Ryan Reese, Henrik Rodel, and George Lynch to fire for the Tar Heels in white. With alley oop, and Reese misses the easy shot. Montrose with the high percentage one. Well, so much for the two-three zone. A size finish by Montrose. A Reese with a nice back cut. Nice read. Charles Thomas for three. Whew. Eight points for Charles Thomas. Only a three-point Carolina lead. His dad played at Gonzaga. He taught these twins how to shoot, didn't he? Montrose 
double team blocked by Marcus Kennedy. And Kennedy thought he had all ball that time. Instead, he picks up his first, first personal foul. Clifford Rozier back in to replace Henrik Rodel. George Lynch taking a seat on the bench as Hubert Davis replaces him. And welcome to the Meadowlands Arena here in East Rutherford, New Jersey, where the number one seed, Tar Hills of North Carolina, taking on the 12th seed, the Hurons of Eastern Michigan. Eric Montrose at the free throw line, a big first half for the seven-footer for the Tar Heels. He's got nine points, averaging five on the season. But the three-point shooting of Eastern Michigan, five of nine from that range, keeping them within striking distance, trailing the Tar Heels 38-34. James Brown along with Bill Raftery and Curry Kirkpatrick and Billy again, Central make that Eastern Michigan not in awe of the powerful Tar Heels at all. And the point guard, look at this ball moving, three. Cut. They looked at a little tape, don't you think? A lot of tape. They're rolling the lane. They're an unselfish team. They're a terrific passing team. Marcus Kennedy all of a sudden has 12 points in the first half. And here come the Hurons. Neely. No goaltending on Rozier. King Rice settling things down at the point guard spot. Big basket by Neely there, huh? Couldn't convert. Montrose fouled and give the foul to Carl Thomas. This will be a two-shot situation for Eric Montrose. Carolina has, in fact, capitalized off of the Eastern Michigan turnovers. Carolina still doing the job on the boards, out-rebounding the Hurons by six. But Eastern Michigan, again, with their three-point scoring within two points of the Tar Heels. Fox and Reese on the bench. Uh, Dean Smith needed a basket. He went right inside to Montrose. He's been effective with the size differential. And I take it over his improvement over the course of the year, JB. Mm -hmm. I saw him early in the year. He's a little bit quicker than he was. The baby's coming along. Uh, Dean Smith, I think in a couple of years, he expected to be this far along. And all of a sudden, they arrived early this year. Montos, one of three seven-footers on this Tar Hill team. And Carolina out in front of Eastern Michigan by the slightest of margins. He said to take it on John Cheney's Temple Squad. Dean Smith with a little 2-3 zone. Make them use the clock. And this is a compliment to Eastern Michigan. As the bench scoring is noted. Good ball moving again. Nine of those 14 points bench scoring for Carolina from Eric Montrose. They've got good perimeter shooters. The Thomases, Neely can penetrate, shoot the jumper. And of course, look at the alley oop for the big guy. Right there. Yep. Kennedy couldn't convert. They are smooth. Mm -hmm. No ridicule when you watch this club. I have to push it back. Jumpers with the rebound. Only the second rebound for Marcus Kennedy, who averages eight on the season. This is a well-coached Eastern Michigan ball club. Ben Braun having done a nice job in his sixth season there. While well, Ben Braun's working himself into everybody's column. He'll be the next future that they're all talking about. The uh, future is now for Carl Thomas as you take a look at Ben Braun. And Carl Thomas having dropped in 13 first-half points as you take a look at St. John's leading Ohio State by 11. Ohio State still has not hit its offensive stride. Pete Chilcutt in the offensive flow with that drop. Uh, Dean Smith going strength right now, dumping it down. No more back screening. They've got the size. They might as well take advantage of it. And that is the one distinct advantage that Carolina enjoys over Eastern Michigan. A little 1-3-1 now. Again, the alley -oop. 
This time, the high percentage shot, the way shown by Carl Thomas. 15 first half points for Carl Thomas. And early send it in by Carl. I mean, they're just ripping these defenses apart for Carolina. Nice look. Chill cut foul. And it looks like it's going to be on Carl Thomas. Near the conclusion of today's game, Bill and I will select the Chevrolet most valuable player of the game from each team. And in their honor, Chevrolet donates a $1,000 scholarship to the general scholarship fund of each school. Pete Chilcutt at 6'10 at the free throw line as you take a look at Roger Lewis coming in for Eastern Michigan. Chilcutt with four points on the evening, averaging 12. Lewis in the game now. He can get by guys. Pretty good passer. Off the shot. One of those guys that finds people. And he can hit the jumper. So they do have nice rotation. And offensive-minded as well. 134. Left in half number one. North Carolina on top by four. And you look at this game, and after watching a lot of their games, I'm not surprised at the way Eastern Michigan is performing. They fill holes, high and low, dump down. You saw a couple of alley oops. They get penetration from the guards. This is Roger Lewis with the ball, the skip pass over to Charles Thomas, back to Lewis. Lewis having replaced Carl Thomas. And Corey Hallis gives him a dimension. He finds a spot in his zone. They hit him, he'll shoot it or dump down. Four six seconds left on the shot clock in Charles Thomas. Playground, we call that up and down. <laughs> yeah, not what Ben wanted. Because his dad calls him Benji. And in reading the different articles, he said that his son Benji has a sense of honesty and integrity. Well, with that combo, he'll last a long time. <laughs> the 11 second difference between the shot clock and the game clock. Carolina on top by four. Making them use a lot of dribble. They're going to go strong low. Reese. Off the mark. And Eastern Michigan with an opportunity to take the last shot and cut it to one. No more. Could be two with a two-point shot. I, I wasn't privy to what Ben Brown said to his assistants, but I'll bet he said, look, let's just play for the first half. Get our feet under us. Get a comfort zone. And they come out and challenge this club. Look at this penetration. Nice pass from Neely to Hallis. 44-42. Rice. And Rice scores the three at the buzzer. And that's the end of the first half. As King Rice closes it up in fine fashion for half number one. Spot it up. Right before the three, you can't relax against Carolina. And that's the end of the half with the score. Carolina on top by five. CBS Sports exclusive coverage of the NCAA Basketball Championship will continue after these words. CBS Sports exclusive coverage of the NCAA Basketball Championship Regional Semifinal Game is sponsored by the employee owners of Avis. We're trying harder than ever. AT&T, the right choice and by Northwestern Mutual Life Insurance, The Quiet Company. Hi again, everybody. I'm Pat O'Brien, along with Mike Francesa. We want to get you right out to, to the Midwest in Pontiac, Michigan, St. John's and Ohio State. Uh, St. John's leads 38-23, to 23, and uh, Jim Nance and Billy Packer are courtside. Three minutes, one second remaining in the first half, and St. John's leading the number one seed, Ohio State, 38-23. Malik Seeley has scored 14 for the Redmen, who have been pressed throughout by the Buckeyes. Full court pressure, but has not troubled them at all. Alex Davis at the line, missing the first of two. And that's surprising, because on the year, he was 13 for 14. Excellent free throw shooter. Ohio State the last hope for the Big Ten after Indiana went out last night. Skelton comes in replacing Davis. 
Jim, the big story in this ball game has been the attack against the press by St. John's, the inability of Ohio State to be able to turn anything over from a standpoint of full court pressure. And now St. John's bringing Kane into the game has even more ball handling skill. Number 11, David Kane. Here's Jason Buchanan having a big first half. Seven points, four rebounds, four assists. Dumping it into Singleton. He felt Trey Lee on his right side. I thought he was going to wheel and go baseline on him. Scrolling on Jim Jackson. And traveling Paul. Tenth turnover against the Redmond. In the Midwest. Ohio State and St. John's first tonight. And that'll be followed by Connecticut and Duke. Jackson back in now for the next, the last 2.30. Skelton driving, suspended in the air, gets his own rebound. David Kane strips it free. Ahead, Sproling will oh, take it uncontested. Great play by Chucky Sproling. Tapping the ball forward, which is certainly legal. He's having an excellent first half to give that lift to St. John's that they've needed. That ties the largest lead of the game for St. John's, 16. Two minutes left in the half. You know, the other thing it's done, Jim, it's allowed Steely to go to the bench and get a rest. Here's another opportunity. Buchanan takes it away from Skelton. It's been a nightmare for Randy Ayers in this first half, similar to Bob Knight last night. What a disaster that was. Down 22 at the half. Indiana against Kansas. St. John's knows how to play this game. Ohio State certainly not on schedule to hit 100 points, which they did seven times this year, winning all of them. So the game being played exactly as St. John's wants. Sproling trying to feed it back into Vordan. And Vordan wasn't quite ready for it. May have been an easy two. Slip away on that one. Game summary, St. John's over 60% from the floor. Ohio State hitting one out of three shots. And rebounding edge goes to the Redmond, which no one expected. Seeley with 14 pops the scoring list. Mark Baker back in for the Buckeyes. Posting up is Jim Jackson. Robinson well, may have touched it. Yep. He did. Offensive goaltending. You can see some frustration even in Jim Jackson's eyes here. Uh, but I think this is an excellent move by Ohio State to put him on the blocks. N no question about the call. The ball was still in the cylinder when it was touched by Robinson. But I think it'd be smart to put Jim Jackson down on the, on the blocks and let him try to score there and just crash. Sean Muto, 6'11", senior, comes in for Werdan. Minute 13 left in the half. Nice job by Muto. Muto open for a moment underneath. Now David Keane. And what Louis Karasek is going to use here is all the clock that he can. He's going to have to give it up because there's about 25 seconds difference. Kane will take the jumper. David Kane off the bench for two. Now a new largest lead figure in this game, 18. Got to get Jackson down on the low blocks to get him started. Baker has it taken away. Buchanan on the steal to Sproman. Sproman will hold it up, and St. John's will go for the last shot of the half. And it looks like that sweater that Mike gave to Louis Carnesecca, Jim, had more than one win in it. <laughs> it was actually from Kate Francesca. Oh, okay. Let's, Let's make that official. Mike's right. getting the credit. Kate, you deserve it. Here's Buchanan driving off the glass. No good. Surprised he took the shot that early. Sproling. Four seconds to go. Singleton underneath and fouled by Robinson. Near the conclusion of every NCAA tournament game, we'll be selecting Chevrolet players of the contest. In conjunction with the award, Chevrolet donates a $1,000 scholarship to the general scholarship fund of each school. 2.2 seconds left in the half. Singleton can go to the line, and the Redmond could have a 20-point edge at the intermission. Incredible. All the one seeds have advanced in this tournament so far. And uh, 
St. John's leads 42 to 24, and of your uh, picks, uh, you picked St. John's to win this game. What did you see in your crystal ball there? A couple of things. I thought the Big Ten was down after Indiana's performance. Ohio State didn't come in playing very well, and St. John's matched up well. They could handle Ohio State's pressure. They've done that very well in the first half, and they're shooting the ball very well right now. Good job on that pick. There's another half to go. Uh, we want to bring people up to date on what's coming up later tonight. Connecticut and Duke out of the Midwest, and then in the East, Temple and Oklahoma State. And uh, we'll be back after this. Stay with us. And Easter's breaks and shocks. Nobody beats Midas. Nobody. And by Bud Dry. Why ask why? Try Bud Dry for refreshment that's beyond question. Carolina leads it at the half, 47-42. But the first half performance by Eastern Michigan, a poised and confident group. And as Curry Kirkpatrick found out, it wasn't only the offensive performance that Ben Braun was pleased with. Ben Braun, you've hung in with the Tar Heels with nothing from Lorenzo Neely. What, what are you going to do about that? Well, I don't know if we had nothing from Lorenzo. I think Lorenzo gave us some assists and playing some pretty hard-nosed defense. But uh, some of the guys are scoring pretty well right now. I think uh, Carl Thomas hitting the three, and we're getting Marcus and Corey open on the inside. So if we continue in that vein, we're shooting 58% right now. It's not about offense, Curry. It's about defense. We play, we play defense. We're in great shape. Thanks a lot. Good luck to you. And indeed, defense has served Eastern Michigan well, although North Carolina has capitalized on the turnovers of Eastern Michigan to pick up 11 first-half points. A lot of them early, but the shooting, Eastern Michigan banging the threes and 59%, pretty impressive. Wow. Does that get you home free? And talk about Eric Montrose, the man there with 11 points off of the bench of the 15 points been scoring for Carolina. Carl Thomas of Eastern Michigan with 15 points, and what a job from three-point land, three of four. Starting the second half here, King Rice, Pete Chilcutt, George Lynch, Rick Fox, and Hubert Davis to five for Carolina in white. Man, man, it's Rick Fox time. Alley-oop to Chilcutt, and Carolina returns the favor for two alley-oops thrown by Eastern Michigan in the first it's half. It's so well designed. Rick Fox back screens, Chilcutt's man. Gorgeous look. Nice look Kennedy. there. And obviously, Ben Braun figuring out ways to free up Marcus Kennedy. Well, they've emptied out the sides, and a gorgeous look by Corey Hallis, multi-dimensional performer. 14 points by Marcus Kennedy, averaging just under 20 a game. Rick Fox. Chilcutt with the rebound. A wide open Hubert Davis for three. A 52-44 Carolina lead. But Eastern Michigan, confident and shooting well from three-point land, hanging in. Rick Fox with three personal fouls for North Carolina, playing somewhat sluggish. This is Carl Thomas. And Thomas with 17 points in the contest. J.B. Carl Thomas with a strong finish, but Rick Fox not himself. That pass not typical of his ability. He's got to get in the flow a little bit. Billy, I guess if we had to put a headline on this game, it goes back to what we talked at the top. Eastern Michigan not playing in awe of North Carolina. Not the least. And Lynch is caused to walk by excellent defense. And Kennedy, and what did Ben say to Curry Kirkpatrick? It's the defense. And of course, Dean Smith over the years has spun a little D on his own. Well, Ben Braun is also getting some offense from Carl Thomas, who has 17 points. Marcus Kennedy has come alive with 14. Lorenzo Neely at the point. This is Charles Thomas. Corey Hallis with the ball. Marcus Kennedy. And a foul on George Lynch. Second personal foul. It's been the three-point shooting of Eastern Michigan that's kept them in, although Carolina has answered back with Hubert Davis. Bench scoring the big difference here. 11 points off the bench by Eric Montrose, and both teams shooting well, especially Eastern Michigan. The 2-3 zone look right now. They've been able to get alley hoops, and don't forget, Corey Hallis finds a hole. Ball stays at this end. Carolina doesn't look as active when they're in the zone. Man to man, they've got double ups, they've got situation help. Here, rather than on all out of bounds, they will trap, however. 
Kennedy, nice pass into Hallis. He just finds a hole. He's amazing. Lynch has to double clutch. Good defense by Marcus Kennedy. Up to Lorenzo Neely. Neely, nice move and drop. But they call him for walking. Now, that would have made his teammate from high school, Derek Coleman, please, but uh, not so much for Ben Braun. Uh, well, Derek, they, Derek played against Kennedy as well, and both of them pretty good defense. Typical of Eastern Michigan. They fight on every release. Carolina's got to get that action out. A lot of back screens. Not able to get their back door in flow. Chill cut. Nice smooth move by Pete Chilcutt, and Chilcutt has 10 on the evening. 54-48, Carolina on top. 16-40 remaining in the contest. Hallis. Carl Thomas. I just can't get over Hallis finding spots to free himself. He didn't make the Canadian national team. I think he will the next time. Last cut from that 88 Olympic Canadian squad. Nice move on the inside by George Lynch. That's his territory. Knows it well. Physical, elevates quickly. He and Fox make it awfully tough because they can bring the outside a little bit, particularly Fox, and then they can jam it in. So it complements Chilcutt's play. Foul assessed to Marcus Kennedy, his second person to foul. Team first. Is it Dean, Dean, go ahead. Yeah, I'm just thinking Dean Smith now, if he makes it, would they press a little bit? I think he needs more activity out of his club. Trying to get the adrenaline in the Yeah, club. pump it a little bit. <laughs> Trying to free up Kennedy on the inside. Billy, notice how they're spreading the offense right. here on. Uh, they're, they're patient. They're trying to let him go box to box. And they all look for the big guy. Wants to be a lab technician in make classes someday. Charles Thomas for three. Brick, nobody back. Good hustle. Stolen by Charles Thomas. That's the way to make up for a bad shot. Sure is. He beat it out of the hook. Throws it over to his brother, Carl Thomas, for three. Kennedy, strong rebound. And fouled by George Lynch. So George Lynch picks up his third personal foul as Kennedy starts to assert himself from the inside. Well, as noted, and I know you love physical play, Kennedy really goes after it. He's playing with a bullet lodged in his leg, an innocent victim earlier in his career. But think of him playing on an AU team with Doug Smith, Nathan Bunton, and, of course, Derek Coleman, and they won it all playing in Florida against Dwayne Shinsis. Mm -hmm. So they played some pretty good people, and Chris Corsiani was their guard. But this guy can go after it. Substitution for Carolina. Eric Montrose comes in to replace George Lynch, who has three personal fouls. You talked about that bullet still being lodged in the right leg of Marcus Kennedy. Chill cut. Rebound at the miss. Five-point lead by the Tar Heels. 15-20 left in the game. Here's their power lineup. Montrose down low for his chill cut high. Lob pass to Montrose. Try for the slam. Ooh. And an elbow thrown by Carl Thomas. Dean Smith wants the call, but this was inadvertent. Excellent call by the bench. I think they're going to give a timeout right here. But missing the dunk, but staying after, he's going to be a fine player. Doesn't convert, but right here on the coming back, unfortunately, took it right on the chin. Dean Smith into it. It might help the Carolina Tar Heels. Michigan may not be well known to the college basketball community at large, but second longest winning streak. And you take a look at the elbow by Carl Thomas. It indeed was inadvertent. If you take a look, he actually tries to pull it back right here. Montrose reaching in with his face, caught the brunt of it. And uh, on the steal on the inbound, 
Carolina back in it, but if Richard Steele was refereeing, they may have stopped the game. Ooh. Ooh. Aren't you <laughs> but this is a man's game. And they get King Rice in a physical play out by half court. Rice and Lorenzo Neely going at it, and Dean Smith trying to tell King Rice, get control of yourself. Well, not far from home, up in Binghamton. King played some football in high school. And a little shot of Ben Braun. He's done a great job getting his team prepared for the multiple look of Excellent. Carolina. Excellent job. It's Neely, Hallis, Carl Thomas with the ball, shooting for three. No quit in this club, JB. Four three-pointers by Carl Thomas, and Rice tries to answer back. Charles Thomas rebounded by Eric Montrose. So North Carolina leading at 59-54, and it's been a battle of three-point shooting. Hubert Davis with the ball for Carolina. Blocked. And a foul called on Eric Montrose. It'll be Eastern Michigan ball. I right. talked about the three-point battles. Hubert Davis of North Carolina, five of five from three-point land, while Carl Thomas for Eastern Michigan is four of six, and it's a five-point North Carolina lead. Much more alert right now, Carolina. Eastern Michigan with a high pick and roll. They look to hit for three or get it down. Carl Thomas, nice pass into Marcus Kennedy. Look at this effort. Misses two. Subtle thing, the height may be affecting it. <laughs> and and box answers. They do count it quickly. You make a mistake or a miss, you must sprint back and match up. And that had been a problem early in the game for Eastern Michigan. Rick Fox playing with three personal fouls, only his sixth point. He's the team's leading scorer, averaging 17. Look at the ball movement. Hallis blocked by Montrose. Back to Fox for three. Five rebounds for Marcus Kennedy. The lowest remaining seed in the NCAA tournament, the Hurons, a 12th seed here in the East, taking on the top seed, North Carolina. The way they spread the floor, stretches the defense, it makes it tough to double up. And the way they shoot threes, you can't leave them alone. And the height of the front line of Carolina making it tough on Kennedy, but not for Carl Thomas. Five for seven from three-point territory for Carl Thomas. And it's a four-point lead by Carolina. Carolina may have to just play straight up man-to-man -man and stop the traps. Montrose foul by Kennedy. It'll be a third personal foul on Marcus Kennedy. Marcus Kennedy is third, team second. Substitutions for North Carolina. And Rick Fox and Marcus Kennedy doing a little bit of verbal whooping. And Dean Smith out on the floor. Dean Smith has had enough from his perspective. Well, he can go out as a coach to control everybody. The only guy. First, he it was Kennedy and Montrose. Now Kennedy and Fox. JB, I can't tell you what a great competitor Dean Smith is whether it's on the golf course or in a discussion. He's right on top of it. His life happens to be his team. So while matters are being sorted out, the five on the floor for Carolina, Montrose, Phelps, Hubert Davis, Rick Fox, and George Lynch. Productive off the bench, 12 points on the evening. Montrose averaging five. Curry Kirkpatrick has a report for us. Let's check in with him. James, Dean Smith is becoming incensed at the uh, play out in the court. It's getting a lot more physical than he wants it. It all stems from that elbow to Montrose uh, knows that, that he didn't like. He wanted an intentional foul call. And you saw him out on the court when Fox and Kennedy almost got in it. Back to you guys. All right, Curry, and we also saw Dean Smith take a look down at the Eastern Michigan bench. 
pleased from the outside watching Ben Braun talk to Marcus Kennedy to get him under control. That's a foul on Montrose. And indeed, that's exactly how they call it, Billy. Uh, Neely. And in talking, we had Derek Coleman with us yesterday, the New Jersey Net potential rookie of the year in the NBA. And he went to Northern High School, as did Lorenzo Neely. And he said that Lorenzo in high school was the boss. They called him the nerd. He had the glasses, the squeaky voice, and he came down the hallway and saying, you guys better get to class. <laughs> they had a great deal of respect for him. With the little twine in the voice, huh? <laughs> <laughs> little guys have a way of bossing the bigger people around. Second personal foul on Eric Montrose. 15 foul against North Carolina. 12 minutes left in a contest. Dallas blocked. Montrose didn't even leave his feet. Carl Thomas over to Hallis. Back to Carl Thomas. And Carl Thomas will be assessed the personal foul. Third personal foul on Carl Thomas. It'll be the third team foul. But we'll have a break in the action. Little sloppy. Carolina on top by six. Why does a man have to do what a man has to do? Two, three, four. Dry, but dry. Cold filtered for smooth draft. Squad right now, North Carolina on top of Eastern Michigan, 63-57. There's Ben Braun's dad, Zephron, a noted producer. And Ben told me today, I wish I could do half the job that my dad does in his work. High compliment for his father. And his father, of course, the producer of a couple of shows, Tour of Duty and Baghdad Cafe, amongst others. Rick Fox with the shot. Rebounded by Lynch. Boy, Lynch does his best work in traffic. He's one of those hidden prizes. Remember Michael Jordan a few years back? He didn't know how good he was. They have so many good players. They learn how to play with one another under Dean Smith. And a little break here because they needed a good attempt. And the officials a little tight with the calls right now to keep the action in control as Eric Montrose calls for the foul. His third personal foul, six on Carolina. Lorenzo Neely, Marcus Kennedy, Carl Thomas, and Charles Thomas. Corey Hallis, the five on the floor for Eastern Michigan and Green. They are you out of this, but it's tough with that. Big guy in the middle, Montrose. Eric present. Lob pass to Kennedy. Wisely taking it back out. Nice defensive work, Phelps. And Derek Phelps, the freshman from Christ the King High School in New York with the score and a 10-point Carolina lead. And playing the passing as they did earlier in the game. You must value the ball. Can't lead to easy baskets. Kennedy. And Kennedy has had a number of easy shots in the paint. Not fall for him. Not used to the big people around on every trip. Exactly. Stolen by the Huron. And Neely saves it inbounds to Rick Fox. And again... A spurt of sloppy play, and Charles Thomas picks up the foul, fouling Henrik Rodel, second personal, on Thomas. You see the final in Division II play there. Virginia Union losing. Rodel and Phelps out. King Rice back in. And Khalil Felder in to replace Lorenzo Neely. Early in the year, everybody was concerned, except Dean Smith, about the young kids on his club. Could he get them enough minutes? Could he keep them happy? Only with this philosophy can you. They get enough minutes, get a feel for the game, learn his system, and contribute, and stay at Carolina. That's a major concern with this much talent on a, on a Tar Heel squad. Easily 10 deep. Mm -hmm. King White. To Lynch. Little breakdown out front. Can't let a guy turn the corner. That's where King is an asset. He does look for others. 
Carolina out to its biggest lead of the ball game as Felder is called for traveling. It's an eight nothing spurt that Ben Braun is looking at as the Tar Heels have pushed the lead out 69-57, under 10 to play. He was looking to get the timeout. He looked out to see if he could wait for the eight minute mark and the TV timeout. Had to get them organized. They're struggling on both ends at this point. A tradition unlike any other, the Masters on CBS. It's a 12-point deficit that Eastern Michigan is looking at, 9.23 remaining. Eastern Michigan in the NCAAs for only the second time in school history. Hubert Davis. Credit to their conference, too. Ball State last year, Mid-American. Lynch. Ten points by George Lynch of North Carolina, and the Tar Heels have moved out to their biggest lead, 71-57 over Eastern Michigan, a 10-0 Tar Heel run. And Billy, the spark, two near fights that have gotten North Carolina off and running, literally. On the elbow first towards Montrose, inadvertent, and then the whooping, and they're just pounding the ball down the floor right now. They're aggressive in nature, both ends of the floor. They've made turnovers into baskets, long rebounds into fast breaks. Ryan Reese fouled as you take a look at the three-point shooting. Eastern Michigan putting them up, but Carolina more accurate from that range. Bench scoring has really been the note for North Carolina as Eric Montrose has 13 of Carolina's 19 points off the bench. That accounts for a huge margin in that 53% field goal shooting. It helps. And you mentioned the fight. King Rice was not whooping arguing it was fox and kennedy and king stepped in and one thing that dean smith believes in it's loyalty and he's fought the critics playing king rice people felt phelps should get more time a backup point guard a freshman but he believed in him he stood with him and inciting some spirit into this club when fox went after kennedy and it got them involved in the game rick fox back into the lineup replacing the freshman brian reese Rick Fox with only six points on the evening. Lethargic first half play as he picked up three personal fouls. Tough pass. But good defensive reaction by Fox. On this lineup with the zone, when they went zone, they were only permitting, you don't make the shot, that's all you got. One and done, and they were going the other way. I guess that last play by Fox. Examples of what you coaches talk about. You may be off offensively, but defense should be consistent every night. And, and he's their man when you think of it. Look at this run they've been on the last four minutes. Nice look. And Kennedy fouled by Rick Fox as Fox picks up his fourth personal foul. And that will be the team seventh. A shooting foul indeed, but at the seventh foul mark, one and one for Eastern Michigan. And just to think years ago, when he came to Carolina and struggled out of the gate with a very poor player by the name of Billy Cunningham, mm -hmm. Dean Smith came back to the campus and they wanted to get rid of him. Dean Smith? Dean Smith, of all people. How badly did they oh, want to get rid of him? Well, they were hanging him in effigy, believe it or not. I think those people were wrong <laughs> in their summation of his coaching ability. Brian Reese comes back in to replace Rick Fox to take a look at Marcus Kennedy, who was a transfer student from Ferris State in Big Rapids, Michigan. Major in ophthalmic dispensing. A nice way of saying, as you mentioned, a lab technician. Mm -hmm. And a few championships at Ferris State and Mid-American as well. A winner. Lob pass intended for Chilcutt. He got it anyway and scores. Well, Eastern Michigan certainly has some concerns. Let's find out specifically what from Curry Kirkpatrick. Guys, during that last timeout, it was obvious the Eastern Michigan team was dragging. They came over to the bench, and Braun was really upset that Neely especially had not gotten enough rest. The Tar Heels are just wearing him down. Back to you. All right, Curry. 
And Billy, again, we keep making a note about specific turning points in the first half and second half. Second half turning point, two near fights. As Carl Thomas you can see caught them. Eric Montrose with an inadvertent elbow, and then Marcus Kennedy gets into it. And Carolina hasn't been the same since. From a positive standpoint, Kennedy with the score. Well, you can see the heart defensively being broken. They're, they don't have to spunk. They're not in position. They're not as aggressive. And on the offensive end, it's just that the big bodies, you can't make the same passes you might in your conference. And you might get away with them, but there are big people that react beautifully for Carolina. Kennedy certainly has the numbers inside with 17 points in the game, but boy, how many shots has he missed because of that height? Easy ones, and they've been going to him. Chilcutt. Boy, has he played a game. Pete Chilcutt, 16 points, averaging 12 on the season. I want to see Chilcott dribble the ball once. He is so smart in there. Doesn't waste it in traffic. Nobody's going to grab it from him. Kennedy finally gets one off the glass. 19 points for Marcus Kennedy, but the Hurons trailing North Carolina by 17 points. Chilcutt with the pass inside to Lynch and a foul against the Hurons. I think Roger Lewis may have gotten behind in position, but you can see how they keep the motion. King Rice, who ended up with the basketball, if you overplay him, he'll back cut. That time he penetrated and dumped the Chilcutt. Eric Montrose and Derek Phelps in for North Carolina, replacing George Lynch and King Rice. You know, you really have to feel good for King Rice. You mentioned before he's weathered the storm weathered the critics, and really is winding up a fine senior year. Well, they had the right guy behind them, Dean Smith. Makes you a little better player. Gonna stick with you, help you improve, give you confidence. Eastern Michigan really unable to make some things happen with their defense. But Brian Reese able to make things happen offensively. The freshman from Tolentine High School in New York. Stolen by Davis. They got away with that all game. And a nice three by Hubert. Big disparity between first half and second half field goal shooting for Eastern Michigan. They shot 58% in the first half. And take a look at the second half. And give Carolina some credit defensively. They went after it. Stepped it up a little bit. Showed some spirit. How in the final 16 could you be relaxed and not involved? That's like asking you to relax, huh? <laughs> well, I think Eastern Michigan's done a great job. And you can see that's from the nose, believe it or not. Let me tell you, John Madden would love to see oh, that. Oh, he'd be on his all match team. Look at this. Dirty. Going down after it, mixing it up. It's not football, but they don't have helmets. They don't have pads, John. They just bang one another. Not able to go cross court, the straight up man to man. Look at the pressure right now. This is the step up, even though Durek was impatient. Phelps on the reach in. Derek Phelps with the foul. First of two games to come your way here from the Meadowlands Arena. East Regional Semifinals, North Carolina, the top seed, playing the 12th seed, Eastern Michigan. Carolina comfortably in control, 82 61, along with Curry Kirkpatrick and Bill Raftery. I'm James Brown. Carl Thomas at the free throw line. Thank you. Thank and Thomas you. has had a strong evening, 26 points. One. But a long ways to go, as the faces of the Hurons tell you. And some reality setting in. You can't get something out of your defense. It's tough to come back. They're not stopping. A little full court pressure generally gets a good club. It turns into a basket. You know, Billy, you were talking earlier about this being a very deep and talented North Carolina squad, but Dean Smith has a nice way of putting the freshmen in place. Early on, well, they played one another very early in October, just to prove a point. And the varsity 
put them away cleanly. So enough of the discussion about who should be played. He went with the elder statesman. The freshman against the upperclassmen. There's no shot. They don't know a play. <laughs> they don't know how to play together. But they've got talent. That's <laughs> all they were saying. Montrose stepped out of bounds. Huron's basketball. And right alongside Dean Smith is Billy Guthridge, longtime assistant, old friend of mine. We used to coach in Puerto Rico. He still has all the money he was paid down there, incidentally. But he was saying before the game, nice little dish, slip pass. That and again, an indication of that height of Carolina working as Hallis had to double clutch. Always attacking. But to finish Billy's thought, they prepare their game. They don't worry about the opponent, so practice is simple for them. They just do their things, and their aggressive style takes you out of what you want to do. You know who had that philosophy, and obviously it worked so well? John Wooden at UCLA, four years. Obviously, he had a lot of talent, but that was his philosophy as well. I was just happy if the bus got there. <laughs> Chilcutt. Pete Chilcutt continuing his super play. 18 points from Pete Chilcutt, and he's perfect from the field in the second half. Six of six. Good hustle by Hubert Davis. And Marcus Kennedy, if only because he's so much bigger, is going to be whistled for the foul as Kennedy picks up foul number four. Eighth team foul. And it'll be a one-and-one -one shooting situation for Hubert Davis. And North Carolina doing a fair amount of substitution. And Dean Smith will have a chance to find out who's going to be in as we take a break. Carolina comfortably ahead. 13 minutes remaining. St. Charles 62. Three minutes and 30 seconds away. North Carolina hoping to advance to the regional final on Sunday. It was still a close game with 12.45 remaining, Billy. Only a four-point difference between Carolina and Eastern Michigan. Then North Carolina scored 15 straight points over the next five minutes, and they've broken it open. And Hubert, no small factor in that run. But you harken back, Dean Smith walking out on the floor to make sure things were broken up when there was that little altercation between Fox and Kennedy with King Rice refereeing. And Dean may be spurring his club on with a few remarks to them. Turn the game their way. Much different outlook. Hubert Davis spurring them on with 18 points, including five of five from three-point range. A 23-point Tar Heel lead. 2-3 zone, problem size-wise for them. And then when they went man-to-man, -man, Carolina disrupted their flow. Mm -hmm. And Neely could never really get on track. And Kennedy has had just a basket full of easy shots on the inside. And coming up later on this evening, it'll be Connecticut and Duke. Boy, that ought to be a nice and even matchup. And Temple, John Cheney's ball club, shooting exceptionally well the last two games, taking on a big and physical squad from Oklahoma State right here. Montrose. Very productive off the bench. Another year or two, he's going to turn and take it on him. So look at them use the post, almost a turnover here as Fox tries to lead Davis. Good thought. But Montrose, I think, will take it himself in the future. That was his play. Tough-nosed kid, Eric Montrose. And as you said, boy, you can see the progress through the season. Oh. Very Three-point shot by Roger Lewis. Didn't find the mark. Well, Dean Smith, for the past two years, Billy, had been trying to get past this mark here, the regional semifinal. Last year, of course, losing to Arkansas the year before to Michigan. And Montrose doing what he suggested. He would not get there early in the year right now. More aggressive in nature, and they're looking for him a little bit more. It's a different front line, J.B., some strength. <laughs> 12 points over his average. Montrose with 17 and a block. Oh, King. I thought he might flip it back to Rick Fox and let him finish. So did Fox. Yeah. <laughs> uh, two smiles. And the man who loves unselfish play gets guys to give it up and gets all Americans to do it every year. Charles Thomas taking a seat on the bench. 
and Pat Sullivan in for North Carolina. Boy, St. John's, boy, <laughs> Louie has really got him playing well. He brings that violin out, <laughs> does a little stroll along the sideline, gets you playing to his dance. Every once in a while, up speeds it. Hey, you know who's going to take credit for that St. John's victory? Mike Francesa. Well, why not? Yeah, because the of the sweater. sweater deal. Yeah. Sure. Irrespective of the fact that it's not an attractive sweater. No, well, it doesn't surprise me. I uh, mean, <laughs> seeing Michael out in some leisure outfits. <laughs> King Rice makes it a 90-63 North Carolina lead. And Rice takes a seat on the bench. Well, Rice has been nice for Dean Smith, the way he wants him to play. Leadership. Leaves the floor with 12 points and 6 assists. Rice was picking nicely. Kevin Salvadori comes in to replace Pete Chilcutt. And Scott Cherry into the lineup along with Matt Winstrom as Dean Smith emptying the bench here. Kenny Harris also in for North Carolina. Now we were playing up at a tournament in Rochester. Les Harris used to run the tournament. And Dean Smith was playing Dartmouth. We expected to play him, but we were upset by one real titan in the ranks of basketball. Fraternity, but all of a sudden, you know, they are playing a slow-down team. And I said, Dean, you know, how do you prepare for them? He said, we do the same things in practice. So if you want to play slow, it's our job to get you out of it. They went out and had that Dartmouth team playing quickly. Mm -hmm. The Chevrolet players of the game, Marcus Kennedy of Eastern Michigan and Eric Montrose of North Carolina. A check in the amount of $1,000 will be donated to each college's general scholarship fund to further assist qualified students in all chosen academic fields. And he had to compete all game on that glass and fight the big people. Carl Thomas in particular played well outside, but this guy had to fight the Titans. They've got a lot of bodies to contend. Not easy to get that soft kiss shot in low mm -hmm. with the high flyers. You mentioned Carl Thomas. He did try to make it easy on the inside for Marcus Kennedy, dropping in 27 points, team high. Pat Sullivan at the free throw line for North Carolina, a freshman. And Billy, I'm going to let you, since you are from New Jersey, where did he go to high school? Pagoda. And where is he from? Pagoda. Thank you very much. <laughs> you were tempted to give it to the Bogota. <laughs> Well, a well-deserved round of applause. The Twins have done a great job for Eastern Michigan. And Joe Fraser coming in for Eastern Michigan, replacing Roger Lewis. 109 to play, and North Carolina will move into Sunday's regional final here at the Meadowlands to play the winner of the game coming up next between Temple and Oklahoma State. And off the bench and scoring is Joe Frazel. One he'll remember. Nice number for Dean in the semis. And you gotta believe that Dean wants it badly. Mm -hmm. And a takedown here as Matt Winstrom drops his seven-foot body. And I don't think Von Nickelberry at 6'2 had any shot of holding no. him up. <laughs> it's amazing now. Joe, Joe Frazier kiss. just coming off the bench with that jump shot for Eastern Michigan. Those are the first points off the bench for Eastern Michigan. That is some note. And he wants us to describe that jumper as he came over to our half-court position. <laughs> oh, what it means to play. I, I know they're upset. They'll be consoling one another. But a terrific run, a great effort from top to bottom by this club. And they gave Carolina a heck of a run. And you think of King Rice's three at the end of the half. 
was crucial too. We keep alluding to the skirmish, but that was big as well. Mm -hmm. The senior leadership we talked about at the top of the show, Billy. Mm -hmm. Rick Fox with an off offensive mic, but it came from the point guard position. And a little too fancy movement out front by Felder as he throws it away. So Dean Smith making his 11th consecutive trip to the Sweet 16, a successful one as he moves on to the round of eight on Sunday. And that'll do it. The basket by Mike Boykin wraps up the scoring for Eastern Michigan. But Dean Smith comes away with a huge victory, 93-67. And interestingly, we were talking about how Ben Braun was so excited having met Dean Smith. Good way to call his buddies back home to let them know what an honor to meet the maestro, the guy that's been at the top rung of this profession for so long. And that's delightful to see. And that's a good sign because it was a yep. very physical contest, but hey, all in the heat of battle. Well, the big bodies meeting in a nice way at this point. And so North Carolina moves on, as I mentioned, to the final on Sunday. Who will they play? The winner of the game coming up next right here at the Meadowlands Arena, Oklahoma State. And, folks, they've got a player by the name of Byron Houston, who's a West Unsell clone taking on Temple. So for Curry Kirkpatrick and Bill Raftery, I'm James Brown here at the Meadowlands Arena where Carolina takes it 93-67. Let's go back across the river where our good friend Pat O'Brien has the good seat in the studio, and I'm sure he's staying on top of all the action for us. Yeah, Pat's been enjoying it. A delight to see all the great games coming in and see all these talents performing, but uh, Carolina not being forced tonight. Put that defense on, came away with a win. Well, all right, and I've talked to Pat O'Brien. I know he's thoroughly enjoying the action here in the collegiate ranks. Let's check in in the New York studio with Pat O'Brien and Mike Francesa. Hey, JB, thank you. Enjoying it, we are. 93-67, there's that score. A game for you all to enjoy out in Pontiac, Michigan. 522 left. St. John's leads Ohio State 81-59. to Here's Jim Nance and Billy Packer. St. John's is about to become the second team from the Big East to advance to the Elite Eight. And Ohio State becomes the first number one seed not to advance. And out of the steal as they keep reaching in cleanly and taking it away. And the Big Ten will be out of the tournament. 20 turnovers against the Buckeyes. There it is, playing a little... St. John's version of the four corners. Foul called on Alex Davis. That'll put Buchanan on the line for two. The Midwest bracket uh, with St. John's in such control here will play the winner of the Connecticut Duke game coming up a half hour past the conclusion of this one. Chanel Scott returns for the Johnnies. Jim only though uh, he's only played a few minutes in the first half but came in and contributed significantly in that short period of time taking the ball to the basket right away. Buchanan way short on the first free throw. 13 points nine assists there you see it four rebounds and six steals one more steal and he'll tie the all-time NCAA tournament single game steal record. Exactly, and we'll see the man he tied with coming up in the second game. Scott, Scott Burrell from yeah. Connecticut gets his hands on a lot of balls. See if Buchanan can get one more. Here's one by Sprawling. Unbelievable. Sprawling. Too strong. Well, I cut the roll. I thought he laid up there a little too strong. Well, and how about the pass? Cross court, soft pass. Nothing on it whatsoever. Nobody coming to meet the ball. And Randy Ayers has seen enough. He's calling the time. St. John's with its largest lead. A 25-point lead over Ohio State. Can you believe it? Will there be a close one later on tonight? Billy? <laughs> Connecticut and Duke. Temple and Oklahoma State next on the ledger. 25-point margin here. 
Jim, I, I would, I've not researched this because there was no reason to do it before these games took place, but I cannot remember regional games that have been uh, blowouts of this magnitude, just game in, game out, with the exception of Seton Hall. It, it has been absolutely amazing. Well, you take out the Seton Hall four-point margin and the other four that are final now, not including this one, average margin has been 21 points. And this one riding on 25 as we speak. Yep, will probably increase the average. Baker at the line. Billy Singleton getting a well-deserved rest. Matched up early on in the game with Perry Carter and Trey Lee. More than held his own on the inside. Jen and Skelton will come back in for Coach Ayers. Makes the long pass, dumps it into Wordan. No There's Wordan again. See, they just throw the ball right over the top of the press, and then he distributes. Now Kane finds throwing. No, Smart. Did he do out to Scott? No reset it. Exactly. The clock becomes number another one of your teammates here if you're St. John's. Bad pass. Jamal Brown takes advantage of it. Ball Brown suspended in air, tip in by Skelton. Wow, I thought that might be goaltending, but no call. Now Werdan ought to pick up his dribble. Good move. Another oh. steal by Brown. Errant pass by Werdan. Brown. Now Louis Carnesecca doesn't want to call a timeout because his team should know what to do here, but he is uh, very annoyed the way they're handling this pressure, just throwing away what was an easy lead. It was 25 points, the margin. It's down to 17. With and when you watch St. John's practice, they work on this so much that Louis wants to see execution here. Skelton reaches in. Kane will shoot two. He's the master of the delay game. What a nice, only one man in college coaching right now, Division I, older than Louis Conaseca. I'm going to say by age, because I really don't think he's old as a coach. You know, his mind is vibrant. He, his energy is tremendous. That man, Butch Van Bredekoff at Hofstra. Took a team to the Final Four with Bill Bradley. Well, Louis about to go to a regional final. Succeeded at Princeton by Pete Carell, who's given us so many magic moments in this yeah. tournament. Yeah. Two for Kane. Of course, Louis succeeded the great Joe Lapchick at St. John's. Another little trivia about St. John's. You know, only two guys have taken two different teams to the championship game. One is Saint, was a coach at St. John's, Frank McGuire, then at North Carolina. The other, Larry Brown, of course, UCLA and Kansas. And Larry Brown recruited to North Carolina by Frank McGuire. So a real St. John's connection there in history. Davis, a three-pointer. Jackson high for the rebound. This is the layup. And a chance for an easy fast break there. But one of the real smart players in college basketball, Billy Singleton. He's not going to make mistakes. I, I would say 40 yard dash. What would you say Billy Singleton is in the 40? Yeah? He would set a new record. Well, I, I think. With all due respect to Mr. Singleton, of course, with the knee injury and everything, I do think, though, that Billy Packer could beat him in the fourth. <laughs> but he could not beat him in helping a team win a game. The guy just does a great job in that area. He's having quite a tournament. 21, a career high against Texas, now with 11 in this game, above his average, the co-captain. You know, he's the kind of guy, if he didn't score or rebound, does so many of the good, smart things in the game, blocking out, picking up the help out of man that's driving to the basket, getting good position for his teammates to help him rebound. Off pass to Jackson. Late time for Jackson. Jim, too little, too late getting Jackson on the box. Big Ten started out with five in the field. They're all out by the Sweet 16. Did not make it to a regional final. Last year, Billy, they had seven. That's right. And 0 for 7 to the final four last year. Right. 
Well, these things go in waves in terms of conference, uh, outstanding conference play. The Big Ten uh, win a couple of years with, I thought, the best conference in the country. But they put a lot of guys into the NBA out of all of those teams. Now it's kind of evening out a little bit. Oh, what a great fake by Buchanan. Davis turned. Look at Buchanan go by him. Blocked, however, by Carter. Final minute. Pointer. Jackson, no good. And here comes Seeley and St. John's. Malik Seeley with a very quiet night. Singleton at the other end. Put it up without the dribble. Caught Carter off balance, who was ready to block it. Some win for St. John's. Never would have anticipated the way they attacked that press. Chent with a three. Louis clearing the bench with 30 seconds to go. He's got some guys at the scorer's table. I don't know if they'll get in unless there's a foul committed, however. Get him in the box score. If there's a foul, we're Dan. Lay up for him. We're Dan now with a new career high, Billy. 21 for Robert Wardan. So well, we've seen him have two of his best games of this year and his career at Connecticut and here today. They're already celebrating at St. John's, but they've got to inbound it. There's Seeley just throws it over the top of his head. There's still two seconds on the clock, Malik. Well, Billy Singleton has been celebrating here in the <laughs> sideline for 20 seconds. Baker takes the inbounds, the Big Ten co-champs. He's eliminated. St. John's is one game away from going to the Final Four. And the first one seed of this tournament to lose, Ohio State. The Midwest brackets look like this now. St. John's will play the winner of the game 30 minutes from now, Connecticut and Duke. The Chevrolet players of the game, Robert Werdan of St. John's. 21 points, six rebounds, four blocks. And Jim Jackson with 19 points for Ohio State. Pat O'Brien and Mike Francis will continue our coverage from the studio in New York. Just a moment. A tradition unlike any other. The Masters on CBS. Did you know? The cost of two 12-page fax transmissions from these Minneapolis newspapers to Chicago may surprise you. I got an exclusive interview. With AT&T Pro Watts, your business can't get a more accurate way to send a fax. She talks a lot. And our prices are extremely competitive. Even though the other company would like you to believe, they always save you lots of money. Wait a minute. That's news to me. Can I quote you on that? AT&T Pro Watts. Another AT&T advantage. Every business morning, while the rest of the world is getting up, UPS is guaranteeing overnight delivery before 10.30 to the most people, places, and businesses for far less than other companies charge. And every business morning, more people are waking up to that fact. Good morning. Good morning. Which 4x4 half-ton pickup gives you better ground clearance, Chevy or Ford? Both try to drive over this protected camera cage. First, the Chevy. Plenty of clearance. But the Ford. Cameras don't lie. No wonder more truck owners switched to Chevy last year than to any other truck. When it comes to ground clearance, more people are winning with... Heartbeat of America. Now it's easy to win with a heartbeat. Welcome back to our studios in New York City. Uh, Pat O'Brien along with uh, St. John's graduate uh, Mike yeah, Francesa. True. Good pick. You picked the team there. The Big Ten's gone from the tournament. I uh, want to catch everybody up to date on some tip times now. Temple and Oklahoma State in the east. That is our next game. That tips at 945. And then out in the Midwest, UConn and Duke. That tips at 958. Right now, let's send you back out to Pontiac and Jim Nance and Billy Packer, fellas. back at the Silver Dome where St. John's has just defeated the Buckeyes. Lou, congratulations. A lot of people out here were expressing surprise that you were able to handle the Buckeyes press so well. So how'd you manage it? They were marvelous. They were so good. I'm so proud of them, really. Robert, congratulations.
Falcons for uh, 21 points tonight. You guys played inconsistently the last part of the regular season. How do you explain this last this last minute surge here in the postseason? Well, we uh, became very focused. We started working very hard. We knew that we had to do that to come, to play well in the NCAA tournament, and uh, things are just going great for us right now. What does this do for your confidence to knock off the number one seed? Oh, it's a big boost. I mean, we're going to have, but we still got a tough game. Whoever we play, Connecticut or Duke, it's going to be a tough game on Sunday. Right, now look ahead to that game for us just a little bit. Would you like to see an all Big East uh, Midwest Regional Final? I'll have to be very diplomatic now. Both are very fine teams. Naturally, we go with the teams that are up north, so we would rather play that. However, we know the University of Duke is very, very good. So. It's out of our hands. That's very diplomatic. One last question very quickly. Does this sweater go to the Hall of Fame if you make it to the Final Four? Oh, that's a, if they want it. <laughs> All right. Maybe Francesca will take it back. Back to you guys in the studio. That's a great-looking uh, sweater. Yeah, come on. I'll get to the sweater in a minute, all right? That's Andrea Joyce reporting and did a nice job for us out there in Pontiac. And uh, you bought on that sweater. Let's get to that in a minute. Uh, the Big Ten has gone from the gone from the tournament, and I think the indications were with the Indiana loss and the one-sided loss last night that the Big Ten wasn't as strong as maybe some of us thought it was. And Ohio State didn't come in playing well, and and St. John's matched up very well, handled the press all night, got off to a fast start, and was in control start to finish. Was Louis overwhelmed there, or was he just uh, being a little stupid? You know, I think he is a little yeah. overwhelmed. You know, when you get to his age, trying to get back to the Final Four one more time is kind of a a real tough dream and something that you just you know it's going to be a couple of sleepless nights, Pat, for him. It's some sweater you picked up. That is a I great sweater. Come on, it's a terrible looking <laughs> sweater. Uh, we'll be back after this. Stay with us. Friday night in basketball. Mike Francesa along with I'm Pat O'Brien uh, here at our New York studios. I want to remind you that at 9.45 tonight, just a few minutes from now, in the East Temple and Oklahoma State, that's our game coming up next. And then at 9.58, uh, the tip of Connecticut and Duke. Let's catch you up to date on a couple things going on in the news. Uh, well, the headline writers will go wild with this one. Now, Bo knows knows. Bo Jackson became baseball's latest free agent this afternoon after there were no takers for the injured outfielder's services at the $1 waiver price. Now, tonight, Atlanta Braves general manager John Sherholtz, who drafted Bull while he ran the Kansas City Royals, said that he will talk with Jackson's agent, Richard Woods. Jackson was released by the Royals on Monday. You all know that after they decided that his hip injury had effectively ended Bo's baseball career. Some big news in, uh, for the American ski team. The first World Cup victory by an American skier since 1987, folks. Julie Parisian of the United States of America, that's our country, in case you didn't know that, right, Mike? Uh, she came in first in Watersville uh, Valley, New Hampshire. Here we see her coming down a slope. She came in first place as she goes across the finish line. Ulrike Meyer from Austria came in second, but once again, Mike Francesa, the first World Cup victory by an American skier since 1987. It is the United States of America. Temple in Oklahoma State. We're going to send you out there after a commercial and a word from your local station. Stay with us. For 50 years, WBTV. Welcome to the Meadowlands Arena for Game 2 of this East Regional Semifinals, featuring the third-seeded Cowboys of Oklahoma State taking on the 10th seed Owls of Temple. Already North Carolina is in the regional final on Sunday, an impressive victory over Eastern Michigan. They await the winner of this contest here. And good evening again, everyone. I'm James Brown, along with the coach Bill Rafferty. Bill, two different styles between Temple and Oklahoma State, but this was the floor that Mark Mickey had the worst night of his career, six for 29. You gotta believe he wants to re make redemption. Well, you don't forget when you have a bad ball game. He hurt his ankle late in the year. It really solidified this club. Mark is their go-to guy. They'll run picks for him, but he's great with 
at the basketball, one of the better ones, moving without the ball. All right, and Eddie Sutton is already in the history books as the only coach to guide four different teams into the NCAA tournament, and he's got an impressive inside player by the name of Byron Houston. Oh, he's a great player. He's not that big, reminds you of Wes Unsel, but he's strong around the hole. He has the ability to go outside and shoot the jumper, but every once in a while, Eddie Sutton says, big fella, get down low. All right, North Carolina awaits the winner of this contest between Temple and Oklahoma State, and we'll be back with the starting lineup. CBS Sports exclusive coverage of the NCAA Basketball Championship Regional Semifinal Game from East Rutherford, New Jersey is sponsored by the new generation of Oldsmobile official car, the NCAA Championships, Holiday Inn Hotels, Holiday Inn Stay With Someone You Know, and by the greatest sports performance shoe in the world, the Reebok Pump, Pop Up, and Air Out. Back inside the Meadowlands Arena here for game two between Temple and Oklahoma State as you take a look at the starting lineups and really a pretty evenly matched squad height-wise. What do you like as a key matchup there? I think Donald Hodge has to play big. He's their scorer for Temple. Down low, he has to stay out of foul problems and, of course, match up against that big physical Brian Houston. Ninth year as head coach of the Temple Owls. 19th year overall as a head coach. Ken spent at Cheney State. Eddie Sutton in his first year at Oklahoma State. 21st year overall. Back at his alma mater. And we take a look at Byron Houston. The West Unsell-like clone in the middle. Officials for tonight's contest. Jody Sylvester, the referee. Ted Valentine and Bob Garibaldi. Billy Raffery, Curry Kirkpatrick, and James Brown joining the court side. And the tip is controlled by Temple Donald Hodge, the seven-footer. Raffery was saying would have to play big and strong. by Oklahoma State John Potter. This is the point guard, Darren Alexander. Matchup zone, very confusing. You cannot simulate this in practice except to begin at the anchor. Mark Macon, one-on-one. -on -one. And Macon converts his first pass. And just a reminder of those of you who are tuning in to see the Connecticut Duke contest, you will see that game in its entirety coming up in just about five minutes. Take it to the start of that contest. A lot of communication. They did not get out and play the shooter, and Potter can nail that one. Potter, the second leading scorer on this Oklahoma State ball, State ball State club, State and we've got a 2-2 ball, ball game just underway the here in the middle lane. How about making with the steal right out of the gate? John Cheney says he does more than score, and he's right. Making a said all week long that he has not been thinking about this ball being the site of his worst shooting night but you got to believe he is and fouled mick kilgore going up for the shot fouled by john potter and potter a real free spirit oklahoma state you think of defense don't you over the years henry iba because they won back-to-back -back titles 45 46 neither one of us was around of course <laughs> but eddie sutton returning to the scene of his great play under Henry Iba and his club outstanding man-to-man -man defense every place he has coached Billy this young man at the free throw line a real important key for Temple can shoot it he's now got the ability to make the three and look for it they've opened up his game it's a nice compliment to make it and Kilgore gets the second row and it's a 4-2 Owls lead The zone sets up where you put your people. As you deploy, they match up. You need ball movement and cuts to the gate. Your communication and movement. Potter being hassled by Mark Macon and Macon with his second steal of the evening. Up to Kilgore. And Strickland. Off the mark, Johnny Pittman with the rebound, a seven-foot, 270-pound man. Nice look by Sutton. Heads up, and 
a prototype James Brown. I went I would with Houston, a good runner with the big body. A man-sized play by Byron Houston, his first basket. One for two for Mark Macon. The site of when he was six for 29 three years ago against Duke as a freshman. A baby then, though. Different player now. World of difference. Great offensive attitude. Ball movement and cuts. Sean Sutton, the coach's son, at the point. And speaking of gutsy kids, when you think of him at Kentucky taking a heap of abuse as a player and playing his best night in and night out coach going along with his dad right now bottom for three can make them and that's the trouble with the zone right now john cheney's gonna have to stretch it out a little to the gate that deep shooting 7-4 cowboys lead 16 37 in half number one car starfin for three potter with the rebound he's got to make them outside Vic Starpin, the glue for this club. It'll give Sutton a chance to double down if he does not nail the outside jumper. Potter. Boy, John Potter is off to a very fast start. Eight points, three rebounds in the first four minutes of play. And they say he's short a dollar on occasion, a little bit loose. Got the hair cut before the Oklahoma game. 20 some odd points, and he believes it's the haircut that did it. Donald Hodge down low, and Hodge gets the drop. Soft touch by the seven-footer from Washington, D.C. And again, the reminder, we are about seven minutes from the start of the Connecticut Duke contest. And those of you who are tuning in to see that, you will be switched very shortly. First miss for Oklahoma State, four of five from the field. This is Macon. With the explosion. And his goal can be called. They're trying to get it. In fact, it was, so credit the basket to Mark Macon. Temple trailing by two. The first half, Oklahoma State on top, and Oklahoma State got to the Sweet 16 by getting by New Mexico State and NC State. Temple, on the other hand, Got past Purdue and Richmond. And these two squads are banging heads right now. 15-10 left in the first half. Cowboys on top by two. And the Cowboys are running some man-to-man -man stuff. You've got to mix it up to defuse this tough defense. They'll tag the shooters. Sutton at 48% from three. And of course, Potter. Rebounded by Mick Kilgore. Big for Starpin, Mark Strickland, Donald Hodge, Mark Macon, Mick Kilgore, the five on the floor for Temple. And Temple, by virtue of Mick Kilgore's score. Curry Kirkpatrick has a report on the Temple bench, Curry. James, uh, John Cheney in the Temple huddle is very concerned about Potter's outside shooting. The Owls are not shifting to his side quickly enough. Back to you guys. All right, Curry. Uh, Curry, they did that time. You were right on it. Just better offense. And I think John Cheney showing body language exactly what Curry was talking about. Very concerned. I'm glad we're not Mikey. John Cheney, he can go after it. Mark Macon. And Mark Macon for three. They had run a double for him earlier, and Kilgore took the shot. They've mixed up the offense much more than early in the year, at least for my seat. And an accurate start so far for Mark Macon. Three or four from the field. He's got seven points. And he was trying to tag Potter. They not able to get him involved because he's going down and through. Foul called on the inside against Temple. I think it was on Mark Strickland. Right here was Curry had mentioned they're going to come out and challenge, but some better ball movement and, of course, the ability to find home.